Hi, this is Brandon from Watches on You. Today we're going to be taking a look at the legendary Seiko SKX 007. So now, right off the bat, I just want to let you know that I'll be leaving a link in the description if you want to learn more about this piece and purchase it. The link is going to be to the cheapest Amazon link that I could find. I'll link both the rubber version and the one on the bracelet. Uh, so just for convenience, I just wanted to let you know that those are there. So now let's dive into the rest of the aspects of this watch. So this watch comes in a stainless steel 42.5 millimeter diameter case, which I think it wears a little bit smaller. You'll see that more on the wrist shot. It probably wears more like a 40, which I really like actually. It definitely looks smaller in real life than it does on online, which I was very pleased about. I had never actually seen this in person until I purchased it, and I'm quite pleased with the results. So. Obviously you have this dive bezel here and I'll get into that right now because a lot of people want to hear about the dive bezel and its action and sound and everything. So it is a 120 click bezel. It's very, very smooth in its action. The lockup is great, but I definitely prefer the bezel on the SNZ F17 that I have here and we've reviewed this in the past. I'll leave a link to both this watch on Amazon and to our review for your convenience. But the bezel on this, the lockup is about the same, but it's the click is a little bit louder, but it just feels a little bit smoother too. I just really like the action. And that's definitely a matter of personal opinion. It's not like the SKX's, SKX's bezel is any worse quality. I just prefer the SNZ F17s for those reasons that I listed. So one aspect of this watch that no one really talks about is that it has a beveled crystal and as you get, what I mean by that is you can see there's this little surface that was kind of cut on the side of the crystal right where my finger is that sort of acts like a magnification. It's not really a magnification, it just kind of adds that effect and it gives it a very high end look. I mean it makes it look like this was very very well designed and well thought out. Uh, just for the virtual aesthetic it looks, or visual aesthetic sorry, it looks very very nice. And so getting into the dial of this watch, so as you guys can see it has a, a date wheel with a white background which is not actually typical. Um, I mean it's typical for a watch in this price range but like for a dive watch usually they like to match the, the colors. Oh sorry about that. And you can see on this SNZ F17 it, it does match and that's why I think this is not really typical because the, this SNZ F17 is like $70 cheaper than the SNK, SN, or sorry, SKX 007 and it has a date with a black background that matches a little bit better. Now I do understand kind of why they did that on the SKX. It's probably just to like create symmetry with that other loom pip over here because they're a little bit wider on this than they are on the SNZ F17 but I, I still would prefer a black date wheel. I think that that would have been a better feature to add. And it's not like it costs them any more money to produce that, given that on their cheaper watch they're already doing that anyways, but I, I wish they would have added that. So now getting to the movement, this is powered by the legendary Seiko 7S26 movement, which is definitely a workhorse. So some interesting things about this movement is that it's automatic, but you cannot hand wind it which I would have really liked to see. I think that that's a very important feature to have, especially given that the power reserve is only rated to 41 hours. Now I have heard that people are getting above that in power reserve, but I think that they still should have included a hand winding feature. I think that would have been a little bit more convenient. So now moving on to a wrist shot. So this watch is very comfortable on the wrist, and as I said, it it wears a lot smaller than it's suggested online. I mean, I have a pretty much average size wrist. It's about seven inches in diameter, and the 42.5 millimeter case on this definitely wears more like a 40, I'd say. So definitely keep that into uh, consideration, and I prefer it as a 40. I definitely was impressed with the size again. So another thing that I want to note about this watch is that it's actually no longer made by Seiko. So in the scope of maybe 50 years, this could make a great investment piece. So if you like this video, please remember to subscribe and share. Thank you.